Okay, hey guys, welcome back. We're just uh, fitting in another live stream here this weekend. I've um, got a kind of an interesting topic. Well, interesting for me. Um, that that last video did really, really well. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. Um, but it really surprised me. I did not think that video was going to be as viewed as much as it was. And, uh, you know, you guys <laughs> proved me wrong. So I, I find this stuff that I'm talking about today very interesting. You may not. And that's cool if you don't. Um, I, I never know when this stuff is going to work out when it's not, so I just keep on plugging away, and if you like it, thank you very much for it. Um, the Patreons have been very active, and I really appreciate that. That's really what's supporting this channel, what keeps me going, and uh, we're just growing and growing, and that's the goal, right? Hopefully, we can build that up to something where um, I don't have to worry about taking a lot of work, and we can really just do fun projects. So here's the fun project that I'm working on right now, and uh, this is just kind of my little side thing. I recently found out that there is a Plex machine in my city, which is incredibly rare. If you live in a big city, you probably have a couple of them. But here in a relatively rural area that I live in, um, it's pretty odd that there's a Plex machine. And um, if you don't know what a Plex is, go look it up. Essentially, it's just a CNC machine that does fret work. And uh, it doesn't, it's not completely automated. It's, it's a CNC machine, just like the CNC work that we're doing here. And uh, what it really does is it lets you tune your frets in to just very precise numbers, right? And, you know, that's what I'm going through right now with the Selmer guitar is that you have to, if you're not plucking it, um, you, you have to do a lot of strings on, string off, uh, you know, reworking, reworking over and over again. The fret, the plec, um really just makes that a uh, setup where you know you put the plec in the machine, you measure all the frets, you um, essentially CNC surface all those frets, and then all you got to do is uh, finish the frets off, and you've got a perfectly playing guitar. Um, so, <laughs> in a lot of the guitars I've built before, it hasn't really been an issue, but I'm building more and more stuff, and I want to I want to keep making better and better quality stuff. So this is something I've been looking into. Um, I've got some ideas of different ways to accomplish this on my machine. One of the things that really bugs me about the way Plek um, uh, does their surfacing work is they, they measure all of the frets under tension, with the strings on under tension. And then when they do the carving work, they release the tension from the frets. And then they compensate. Um, uh, that kind of seems like a mistake to me. Like, I really would like to be able to do this fretwork under tension. So essentially, like the Dan Earlywine Stumac jig does, where you put the string under tension, or the neck under tension, you uh, brace the neck, and then you take the strings off, but the neck is still held in, in the tension spot. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so I bought myself a little probe, this little... Uh, digitizing probe I'm gonna I'm doing some tests right now to see if this is gonna be accurate enough to achieve what I want to do it seems pretty close um, it's this one's just a uh, it says right here drewtronics.org and s5000 um, not incredibly expensive but um, I, I thought about building one but uh, I, I'd really like just to get into doing this so um, essentially it's a lot of coding work uh, <laughs> it's a uh, uh, not typically what you would see here, but um, recently I put out the, uh, uh, the the fret spacing calculator that I did in Fusion 360, and that was an add-on that I built in Python. Um, I like to do coding work. I don't like to do it all the time, but I like to do a little bit of it, and uh, I'm really kind of just expanding my horizons when it comes to coding here. I, I haven't done a lot of Visual Studio stuff, which is what we do in Mach 3, but, uh, well, let's come over here and check this out. So I created this little screen set in Mach 3, and I'm still just doing testing stuff. Um, and, you know, hope, the plan is to get this stuff on, up on Patreon, and, uh, you know, hopefully if you guys are interested in this, we can just keep moving forward with it and build something that's really cool that other people can use. Um, so, yeah, this has a bunch of DROs where you can input uh, data over here. This stuff down in the bottom left-hand corner is just kind of like there for me error handling essentially so what I can see what's going on as it's happening you got your typical XYZ and then really most of this all of these are just uh, you know pretty much save wizard um, quit weird. oh this is mock screen that I'm using right here and uh, it's just a screen editor for Mach 3 
So the plan is to use a kind of a wizard like this to uh, uh, measure all the frets, and then we're going to pull all that data into Fusion 360, and I'm going to write a wizard, or not a wizard, but an add-on in Fusion 360 to handle all that data and create G-code that we will run again on the machine. So um, it really highly configurable, configurable, <laughs> uh, very similar to to what um, to what. Uh, the Plex is doing, but um, you know, really, if you want to configure this to any different configuration that you're doing, um, it's just really easy to configure. That's the that's the idea. You know, I want to be able to experiment with, you know, like milling the fretboards in different ways, and and uh, you know, different ways to handle that string envelope and how things go. Um, but anyways, let's get back to this. So, I've I've started out with a little bit of code here. If you look in this. Uh, this guy here I've got a little bit of code here and uh, I'm just debugging this right now um, it's working pretty good um, but essentially what I'm doing is the same math that I used for the fret spacing calculator I'm using that same math to uh, to probe all of the frets in all of the positions that the strings cross and then when uh, after after we've got all of those points we can um, essentially put them in a text file and then we'll be able to create another add-in in Fusion 360 to use to pull that data from the text file into Fusion. Um, it's kind of tricky and complex and it's just kind of something that I'm going to be working on on the side for probably quite a while but um, I just thought I'd show you guys what's going on. Um, it's kind of a cool little setup and uh, it's been fun playing with it. Um, in Fusion, if you guys have not um, looked into to working with the API, um, here in the Tools tab, um, there's this add-on button. And you can see right here that I've got my fret spacing calculator that I've built there. If you're a Patreon member, you can download that and pop it into this folder and check it out. Um, but really what that's going to do is it's going to pull up uh, Visual Studio for you. And Visual Studio is free as well. Um, they were using Spider until a little while back, and now they've moved to uh, to, uh, to uh, Visual Studio. And I think that's a good way to go. Uh, this is a fairly robust um, uh, way to code. So this is the code that I built for the fret spacing calculator. And it's not overly complex. Um, I pieced most of this together from examples. Um, it, it looks really, tr really difficult, um, but it's not as bad as you might think. So, um, anyways, if anyone wants to participate in that, or if they think this is an interesting idea, I really think this is a cool thing to do. Um, I, I don't know if other people think it's a cool thing to do, but, um, really what it's about is, um, I want to be able to sell and make, um, extremely accurate necks. And, uh. This is, um, and doing it by hand is, is labor intensive. So um, some of that wrought work, I kind of want to put off on the machine. And ultimately, I'd like to, if we can get enough support for this thing, I'd like to build a machine that's just on its own for doing this work. But for now, I'm just setting it up as something that can be done on my CNC machine. Hopefully, uh, it'll be able to be adapted to your guys' machines as well. So kind of an open source kind of an open source like thing that we're looking at here um, let me know what you think if you think we should uh, progress with this or if I should just drop it and do it on the side on my own I think it's interesting I don't know if you guys think it's interesting <laughs> but that is the plan um, just thought I would do a quick live stream and introduce what it's going it's hot out there I don't know if it's hot out there where you guys are but it's very hot out here We've got a nice iced coffee. I've been enjoying the iced coffee in this weather. Um, <laughs> I've been down here in the in the uh, office quite a bit where it's cool. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope your families are doing well. You're staying out of the heat and you're keeping yourself in good condition and in good health as well. Um, I look forward to seeing your comments and seeing what you guys think about this idea. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subscriptions. And definitely, I love the all of the patreon members so you guys are awesome um if you need anything let me know <laughs> i'm happy to help um i've had quite a few patreon people say i've been having a problem with something and they send me a file and i do a quick quick little fix for them and get them back on their feet um so 
Thanks for everything, guys. Really appreciate it, and we will see you next time.